Look at this dude. Yo, what's up, man? Welcome to day three of our VR6 turbo build. Made a lot of progress yesterday. Yeah. Well, I saw your comment though. So someone had said we should check the oil cooler for pieces of metal, which I didn't do yesterday. I didn't see anyone that was off and the oil that came out of it didn't have any bits in it, but we will pull it off again today and check and make sure that's good. And we might pull the pan back off again. Um, I mean, I checked the, the screen before. I didn't see any metal at all in there, but my board's going back over. But other than that, everything else is looking really good. The black came out nice. I like that a lot. And then after I finished the video yesterday, I went ahead and put the fuel rail back on. I did some cleaning on this and on there, but it's looking good. She's looking real good. So today we'll be uh, check the oil cooler, check the oil pump, and then a few more things, valve cover gasket, uh, clutch, belt, and then it's pretty much ready to get put back in the car and then assembling like throttle body, turbo wastegate, uh, the rest of stuff. It's going pretty far. Oh yeah, you wanna swap, this is a four bar you said? Mm-hmm, back to a three. Three bar, so factory mark threes have three bars. He swapped to a four for more fuel, or go back down to a three bar, yeah? Cool. All right, well, let's get started. cooler off we didn't see again any initial metal shims coming out but you want to go ahead and flush it yeah we might as well make sure there's no metal shims in it some coolant had fallen out but other than that we didn't see any type of uh debris like that when i first pulled this off the car a while back and i had it draining mm. i didn't see anything but again it doesn't hurt to take some time real fast and make sure it's good to go right. but overall i mean right now it looks pretty clean yeah. gas it's still new so that's good also, side note, my neighbors are building some sort of contraption. So if you hear a drill in the background all day long, that's what it is. Oil cooler has been rinsed out and then also blown out. So there's no uh, metal piece we can see anywhere. So this should be um, good to go. He's going to rinse out the uh, little screw that goes in it. And then we go ahead and get this put back on the block here. All right, so next we can go ahead and pull off this for the oil filter. We have a new one right here. We'll check that next. Same thing, the oil inside of there had no uh, metal bits in it, but it's worth pulling out. We have to do it anyways and then clean it out and make sure there's no uh, issues with it. So on the bottom of your filter is a, you can get one that goes around this section, but this on the bottom is a 36, I want to say. Just be careful because it is plastic and you can uh, destroy it quite easily. Let's see how this one looks. I haven't pulled a filter out of this one just yet, so yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, got the bucket here. But I drained it from the other side, so there shouldn't be too much in there. I see a little bit right there, but there really shouldn't be that much in there. Oh, so. Yeah. See any metal bits in there? Looks clean so far, at least. No, nope, that all looks good. I don't see anything. At least not yet. Is there anything inside, like the. The fins in there. Good, good sign. All right, so down inside here looks to be clean. The filter looks clean, so good signs. So new filter, new O-ring here, and this gonna go back in there. Looks like all the majority of the piece, like the big chunks, all just sat at the bottom and nothing got sucked up. So that's good. All right, last thing to check, gonna pull the pan off real fast, pull the pump off and disassemble the pump and make sure there's no bits inside it. Um, but same as the oil filter and the coil, I didn't see anything, but while we're here, it's worth checking. Just make sure we'll be good to go for later on. Pan is now off. So we'll have yeah, these yeah, two bolts the here. I think I see these two bolts here. We'll pull this entire thing off. I think there's three, one, two, three, maybe five, four and five. We'll open this up and we'll go through and make sure this entire thing is cleaned out and nothing to worry about. Yeah, looking inside here, right back over there, like tucked up in here. There's a couple pieces right there. So, yep, good call. Thank you guys. I appreciate the comments. I totally didn't think about taking this apart to go inside, but I didn't see anything right in the screen, so I assumed it was good. But good call. We'll make it right. So pump is off. There's only a few right there. You can see that. So a few larger chunks. So thankfully, I mean, we want them out of there, obviously, but those wouldn't have got past the screen, which is good. Um, so we had three chunks like that. And now we're going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to open it up. 
Mm. I'll open this up and make sure there's nothing else I got in there, like smaller pieces. But other than that, it looks pretty clean. All right, with the pump opened up, nothing to report here. So the screen did its job, kept those few pieces out, and we are good to go. So all of our oiling systems, the filter, the cooler, and the pump are all metal free. We are good to go. So now before we go ahead and put the oil pan back on, we're actually going to go to the hardware store real fast. So it normally has these Allen key bolts, which I hate those things. They're always so sketchy. Um, it had one 10 mil, I think you have in your pocket. We're going to the store and get a whole bunch of 10 mils to use to secure the pan versus the Allen keys. Because some of these ones are like very close to being stripped from being used so many times. So we'll get some fresh bolts and get the pan put back on. All right, we're at the good old OB, but there's a really nice rs3 chilling actually i think it would take the convoy truck over this but look at these brakes i need those this car is sick i'm still taking that though but this thing is baller so this one here is when they came out of the oil pan this is a m6 by uh 16 so you see those right here it matches up perfectly bam so we'll get a set of these nice silver ones with some washers and we'll be on our way it's gonna fit yeah so aside from the uh new hardware we were able to pick up a compressor for the barn and a little uh kit here i still have an impact this one has a hose a little uh little kind of thing uh tire one some sockets and another one so very very cool thank you steve now we have compressed air for the house thank you sir even though you'll never see it these bolts one function better and those look so much better so all of our oiling systems are completely good to go we're gonna rotate this back upright and continue on assembling and then probably get it back in the car here pretty soon so while steve is threading these studs out because his valve cover has ones to go in um, i'm gonna go ahead and put the belt back on here and then get started on the clutch So in here somewhere should still have my clutch alignment tool it is bam so this will sit inside and make sure the clutch stays uh, aligned properly after the flywheel is on but it sits pretty much like this and it keeps the clutch right in the dead center so looking here the flywheel can only go on one way if you look where is it at it's going to be this one right here so if you look all the rest of these ones here are a certain distance from the center out this one is the closest one in and it only fits on one way so you can't really mess up this step yep so looking at it it's gonna be this one right here i believe mm -hmm. and that'll line up to that top one there and then for these bolts you want to use this is a m10 triple square you do not want to use um like a 6.1 or an allen key because you will strip them out you have to have a triple square or you're just gonna have a horrible time so this plus that and i'll be fine it's kind of funny i went back to the video this video was about what a year ago of me installing the vr6 clutch on my car but i'm wearing the same shirt in this video wearing the same gloves it's kind of funny so i just want to make sure i do this properly we're going to tighten them all down in a star pattern and then go back and do it again with the torque bar to 44 foot pounds of torque and then after that we're going to do another quarter turn and then the flywheel will be on and done all right so we have our torque bar set to 44 season to hold that side because if you do this without holding the crank somehow it will spin on you and same thing we're gonna go here and start and go in a full start pattern that one's good this one all right so once you go around one time to 44 you do one more like half turn on each one just to snuggle up and then you are done so just a quarter turn that's it so our flywheel is now installed so we have our tool here going through the clutch you want your springs to be facing or the taller side to be facing the outside and you just simply set this into the center and then slide your clutch back and you see how it holds it right in the center and now this will stay in and the fly or, or the pressure plate here will go over top and you have one two and three guide pins to match the lower holes here yeah these ones yeah these ones one two 
and three and the larger holes here are for the actual bolts that hold it around the outside here sometimes it's a bit of a pain to get these little dowel pins to fit through um the designated holes sometimes i've rotated it around and tried the different ones eventually it goes in make sure that stays tight there i'll hold this all right you got one right there is that it i think well nice Okay, you can see so now it's just gonna slide back that so now we'll go ahead and get the um what is it, like six bolts i think it is yeah. and, and it'll do the same thing start pattern bring it all down evenly uh, i think these get torqued to like 15 foot pounds i want to say i'll have to double check and then our clutch system is completely done and installed so at this point i think on the stand wise we're done clutches on belts on everything else i don't think we missed anything everything else is on so i'm gonna go ahead and get the thing up on the engine hoist lower it down to the ground get the trans back on and then we can go ahead and put it in the car and start working on getting it all plumbed and wired back up. But I think everything on the engine itself is good. I don't see anything we're missing. Exhaust manifold, intake manifold, clutch. Everything looks to be good. All right, next step. So close to be back in the car. We have it all strapped up, ready to lift up. And then once it's on the ground, we're gonna set on the tire, get the trans on, adjust the um, lifting point, and then home stretch. Engine's coming up. She's officially ready to finally go back in. It actually went pretty fast, honestly, though. From out, tore down, back together. Whew. All right, so into the car, we're gonna do this mount and that mount as well, still being hoisted up. I'm gonna go through and grab the front support, get that one on, then we can lower it down and it's officially in the car. She put up a little bit of a fight, but the VR60 is finally back and the wagon obviously still has to do to plug it up, but it's in. The biggest issue was trying to move this heavy engine on these cobblestone. They absolutely suck, but we got it. And also in the back, getting the, you can't really see it now, but the rear drive shaft line up. I didn't realize when it's not bolted up, you just move the drive shaft. So I thought we were off a lot, but that just moves. So everything else is in, a uh, bolt, bolt, and bolt for all the mounts. That's good to go. Uh, we need to rotate the whole engine a little bit to make sure the uh, the flange there bolts up to our drive shaft properly. Uh, and then it's just wastegate to here, turbo, and then everything else, wiring and plumbing, but we got it. Now the fun part is remembering where everything goes. I know this vacuum line has to go to the front. Something like, I think this actually goes to the bottom of the intake manifold. That one goes to that one. Hey, look at us go, nice. So that'll go there. These are our fuel lines over here. This goes to the larger one, I think. I believe it does. I believe that routes around under here and goes to this one. This goes to that one. And then this bracket over here goes to this one and wraps around to our alternator and our uh, AC condenser. Or does this one go here? No, that one goes there. And then this one goes there. Okay. Progress. So Steve is heading out. I got a lot of stuff done. Majority of the wiring is all in. I'm just finishing up with some stuff over here. These two go to the bottom here with the ground. Uh, I'm gonna put this back in, plug that up, put the coal pack on, 
Uh, he took the spark plugs with him. He's going to gap the spark plugs to, I think he said, 0.25. He also took the battery to have that charged. Um, he's going to grab power steering fluid, coolant, and oil for tomorrow. Um, but I'm going to try and get everything else done today. I have to pull um, the ball joint out of this one so I can get that axle in because it dropped out and I can't get it back up. I have to rotate the engine just a little bit to get the bolts for the drive shaft to line up. And then once that's done, turbo, waste skate, uh, throttle body. This is the cable for that. Um, this is my upper hose, I believe. Upper hose, that is the lower hose. But other than that, just about everything is all good to go. I have to remember which one these go to. I need to look it up. One goes to one, one goes to, I don't know, but those are there. Uh, this is for the MAF sensor. This is for something or another. I need the AC line still. Close. Well, we're far away, but we're also close. Look at that. Looks so good in the car. I gotta say, I am quite tired, but made some more progress. Had to bust out the pressure washer. Did a little bit of cleaning through the rails here, and it's made it a bit nicer. Uh, we're pretty close, just about everything's buttoned up. Um, a few things to do tomorrow, like coolant and stuff, uh, oil, power steering fluid, and a handful of other things. But we're almost ready for our first startup. Actually, before first startup, we'll do a compression test, make sure everything is good to go, and that checks out, which I hope it should. I, th I think it will. And then after that, finish up the rest of the stuff, and VR6 Turbo Sounds, and drive the car, and enjoy it, and just have a great time. But it's looking good. I like the black a lot better. She's looking nice. Like I said, handful of things for tomorrow. And we're done. Again, if you enjoyed today's video, do leave a like on it. It does help me out a great deal. If you are new here, subscribe. We're just about a 20K. The VR6 Turbo should live tomorrow. Oh, it's been a long time to come, but I'm excited. Very, very excited. Do not forget, be thankful for every single day. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Doing just fine before I met you I drank too much